Hey guys, it's Nub Tactics as Ilya Rangris. I've actually been taking a bit of a break from Final Fantasy XIV, but then a friend showed me the screenshot and I was like, Wow, they brought back the jumping puzzle again? Wowza! So, you know, I went ahead and tried it out and... I may or may not have rage quit a few times, but I did get there in about two hours. Afterwards, I was messaging a friend like, Hey bro, when are you gonna get to the top of the tower? <laughs> and they replied, I don't know man, I need your help, Ilya. You need to make a guide for it, because otherwise without your superior intellect and wisdom, there's no way I'll be able to make it to the top. <sighs> and at first I thought, huh, why would I bother making a guide to help people get through this soul-crushing content any more quickly than it took me to get through it? But then I had an epiphany. If I make a guide for these jumping puzzles, maybe more people will be inclined to try this puzzle and experience the suffering that I went through. I mean... Feel the rushing thrill and exhilaration of making it to the top of the tower after a long, arduous struggle. So come on in to Ilya Rangris's jumping puzzle tutorial and guide. We're gonna teach you to do the jump and the jumping of the... Jump and jump to jump tower. To, to, uh, whatever. So, to do jumping puzzles in Final Fantasy XIV, you have three main jumps to work with, and a few additional techniques to expand your jumping repertoire. Uh, firstly, you've got a micro jump, which you execute by pressing jump and your movement key at pretty much the same time. Then you got a medium jump, which you do by pressing forward for a little bit and then jumping before you reach your top movement speed. This is probably the most difficult jump to do, as it requires some more timing, but with some practice you can eventually get it down. Lastly, you have a full jump, which you can do by jumping any time while you hold your movement for long enough to break into your full running stride. Keep in mind that you cannot change your jump direction once you leave the ground. Every jump is basically a leap of faith. <laughs> Get it? Leap of faith? Like the, the gate event in the gold saucer where you do the jump? Uh, never mind. I'm so... In theory, with the way all jumping puzzles are designed, these tools are all you need to conquer the Moonfire Fair challenge. That said, there are a few more tips and tricks that you can use that'll help you be even more prepared for this daunting challenge. Movement augmenting tools such as Sprint, Peloton, and the Ninja Movement Passive will all be slightly helpful for clearing some jumps and skips during the tower, and are pretty much optional, but they are very good to have on hand. Also, if you run up against the wall in a diagonal direction and jump, you can actually control the distance you cover from your jump a little more precisely, which will also help for a few specific jumps on this tower. Lastly, if you select your character, you get a nice little targeting circle underneath you. Besides showing the way you're facing, the edges of the circle pretty closely correspond with the hitbox of yours that can make contact with the floor. This is mostly trivial, but it will help for a few... Uh, certain jumps later on. Oh! And before we start, I do also suggest taking your personal and other display names if that helps, and turning them off. The less visual clutter, the easier it will be to climb. And with that out of the way, we're off! Take the water spout to the starting course of the jump puzzle, and since I am assuming we actually want to jump for this jump puzzle, we're going to take the right side. This section is very forgiving and can be done with only full length jumps, and if you are doing the Moonfire Fair quest, this section is required. You can skip this section via the NPC for the quest if you really want to, but if you want to do the more difficult section of this jump puzzle, then I suggest doing this part at least for some warm up practice. After this is the second part of the quest section of the jump puzzle, which is also fairly straightforward. The beginning half of this jumping section can be entirely executed with mid-jumps until you get to the staircase. Now, this staircase can also be done with mid or full jumps, but I prefer to use the micro jump scaling method where you quickly hop back and forth along the edges of the platform with micro jumps to quickly go up the tower. I prefer this method not only because it's faster, but there's less risk of jumping way too far with the mid slash full jumps and losing a ton of progress. Once you're up here, you have... the entire rest of the tower to go! And it is 
much less forgiving than what you just finished, so get ready for a rough ride. Now, the first jump to get started may look like a doozy, but there are two main ways to clear this jump. The first is to pop sprint and then do a straight running jump from the bridge. When doing this, you don't want to jump at the edge of the bridge or you will overshoot. Also, make sure you're not continuing to hold forward while you're in the air, lest you run yourself off the peg after landing. If you use this strategy, or in general, you sprint for singular jumps, make sure you right-click your sprint buff afterwards to make sure you disable it, as the movement speed boost may mess up your other jumps. The alternate method of completing this first jump is to line yourself up in a slight diagonal to the peg, I'd say about 20 to 15 degrees, and then do a full jump to land yourself onto the peg, making sure not to get clipped by the corner in the process. Once you've cleared this very first peg, you've got two mid jumps, and then a series of micro jumps to gain some vertical height until you reach the turnaround. Now is probably a good time to talk about corner collisions. If you jump into a wall, and the game thinks your angle is sufficiently towards the wall, the game will halt all of your forward jumping momentum. Additionally, if you remember what I said earlier about your character's circle hitbox, it applies to corners as well. Whenever you're rounding a corner, you must be extremely careful to make sure your fat circle hitbox isn't at risk of hitting the corner, or your jump may get blocked, causing you to fall and lose a lot of progress. Which has never happened to me before, of course. So, with everything I said in mind, go ahead and carefully round this corner. And then up next, we will have two simple mid jumps, and then we'll be get oh no! So, I'm actually pretty bad at these specific jumps, but the strategy that's worked for me the best here is to do full jumps that are angled towards the wall to slightly reduce the jump distance for all of these pegs. Once you've done that, you've reached the top of this section and you've cleared the first tier! Awesome! Now you only have two more, two, three more to go. Starting off, we got another staircase, which you can easily do with the micro jump scaling technique I showed you, and then a full jump to the peg all the way across. I like switching classes to ninja here to make this jump slightly more consistent, and also for another trick coming up. There is also a skip you can do here that involves doing a full jump from the top of the micro jump staircase all the way to the block around the corner to skip this entire section, but it is pretty precise and can cause you to fall all the way down if you mess it up. Which, uh, I, that never happened to me. <laughs> I don't recommend doing this skip. Now, at this block here, you'll see a little tower poking around at the corner. Yes, we need to land on it. Many people here I see try to do a micro jump to land on it, but I think that's pretty risky because a single slip of the finger can turn that micro jump into a mid or full jump, causing you to fall all the way down and have to restart. Now this is where being a ninja with slightly extra movement comes in. This enables you to simply run at the peg and land on it without having to jump. You can do this without any passive movement bonuses as well, but being a ninja or having sprint makes this significantly more consistent. After this, it is a mid-jump to this peg, and then you run down to the lower one. I usually change classes here, do a micro-jump up there, and then it'll be two mid-jumps. One here, and one into the corner. Right, oh, right into the corner on my first try, no less. <laughs> and once we're there, we get another mid-jump, run down to the lower peg, or jump up depending on which peg you landed on, and do a full jump. Then, it's two mid-jumps to reach the third corner. At the third corner, mid-jump to the last wall, walk down, micro-jump up the ladder, and then walk down to the lower peg. It's at this point we have probably one of the most precise jumps of this jump puzzle. This jump may look impossible at first because the block on top is in the way, and if you bonk your head on it, you'll lose all of your jump momentum and fall down. However, if you make your camera point from the top down, you'll see that it's poking out just slightly less than the other blocks. So... Yeah... You know what that means. 
You're going to have to walk to the very tippy edge of the block you're currently on and do a mid jump with about a 5 degree angle towards the block you're going for. If you did it correctly, the top block may push you a little bit, but you will still be able to land on the block you're aiming for. Once you've gotten that jump, it's just a micro jump to the last peg and then a jump up to clear tier 2! Now only one or two more tiers to go, depending on how you look at it, but boy are they going to be rough. The start isn't too bad, though it can look a bit stressful. You jump onto the first peg, and then it's two full jumps to the corner peg. I have never accidentally fallen all the way to the bottom while doing these full jumps before, so as long as you're not rushing, there should be no need to worry. Once you round the corner, you can do a mid or a full jump to this long bar, and from there you have the mainline path, and a skip that I think is very consistent and easy to attempt. For the mainline path, do a few micro jumps to round the corner, and then a mid or full jump to hang onto the bar that's hanging away from the building. From there, you do a mid jump to land on the peg on the other side. This route isn't super difficult, but it has that severe risk of falling all the way down, and I also literally just fell off while trying to do it, so I don't use this route. To do the skip, switch classes to ninja or bard and give yourself a speed boost, or use sprint, and then from the first long bar, do a micro jump onto the supporting pillar, and then do a full jump all the way to the other side. This jump isn't exactly the easiest to do, but it's very easy to attempt and you lose very little progress if you mess it up, so I recommend this skip 100%. Anyway, once you've made it to this platform, it's a mid jump to the next peg, a micro jump to round the corner, two more micro jumps or mid jumps depending on what spacing you're at, another micro jump to round the corner, be very careful about hitting the corner for this one and then a mid-jump to the bar block to reach the halfway point for this last tier. Something that may help you is if you take note of some of these blocks that have a wall next to them. You can actually full jump against the wall for these jumps and have the wall catch you, making just a few of these jumps very trivial and the challenge just a bit easier. And with that, you have made it to Toothpick Land, easily the hardest section of this jump puzzle. This section alone can probably take you a majority of the time to complete. Make sure to take your time with it and take breaks when you need to. Don't forget, this content is completely optional and you don't get anything for doing it besides self-satisfaction and bragging rights. So seriously, don't, don't let yourself get really angry over it. Now that you're at the long bar, go ahead and micro jump to the support pillar, then jump to the left little bridge and up to the first small tower block. Then you micro jump up the first three toothpicks, and now you have your first deadly corner jump. The self targeting circle is going to help immensely here, so make sure to line yourself up as far out as possible. And do a micro jump to round the corner, making sure you don't hit the corner wall and fall. Then you get to do a mid jump and round the corner once again with another micro jump. Uh, good luck! If you ever happen to fall off the corner support pillars, you can use full jumps to jump between support pillars until you make it back to the one you need to start the toothpick sequence again. Anyway, from here, you can either do a mid jump from far away, or a micro jump near the edge to clear this descending toothpick jump. And then it's another corner jump, the last one you need to do. This corner jump is actually easier than the others because the toothpick around the corner is closer to the edge. But as always, be very careful and get as close to the edge as possible before making the micro jump. Once that's done, there is only one difficult jump left. First, micro jump to the next peg up, and then if you look up, you'll see you have to do the same type of jump as you did earlier when making your way up to the second tier but with much smaller toothpicks to work with. So one more time, walk to the edge of your current peg and then perform a mid jump with a five degree-ish angle leaning into the wall. 
If you do it correctly, you will land on the next peg safely. Once all that's done, the home stretch is very easy and even pretty safe if you make mistakes. Do 4 micro jumps up to 4 steps, and then you have the option of making your life miserable by dropping down the left corner to circle around the tower one more time, or instead doing a full jump to the right peg at the right end of the wall and skipping all that. As you'd expect, screw going to the left, do a full jump to the right. Try not to overshoot the jump, but don't worry if you undershoot it. You will collide with the peg and fall to the peg below, conveniently past the most difficult jump. So you will never have to repeat any more risky jumps. Since this is the last stretch, make sure you aren't holding the run button during any of your jumps or you will run off the tower and cry. Once you make that first full jump to the right, it's one more full jump to the left and you're home free. You can feel free to jump up and then celebrate your success with your favorite emotes, or uh, cast self-destruct, whatever you prefer. But anyway, that will conclude this video. I hope you learned a bit about jump puzzles. I wish you the best of luck and much misery while attempting Jump Puzzle Savage. Take care for now!